Hi, my name is John Belshaw. I'm a historian with Thompson Rivers University. And I've been with the institution since about 1989. I'm going to start with a couple of stories. The first one goes back to 2008. In 2008, there was a massive windstorm off the west coast of British Columbia in November. It's the windy season. And it really picked up some steam over the Salish Sea and it smashed against Stanley Park in Vancouver. Now, Stanley Park is much beloved by the locals in Vancouver. It was terribly damaged. Trees were knocked down like ten pins. They were uprooted. Some of them were snapped apart like they were just toothpicks. And people were devastated. People love Stanley Park. They were horrified. They talked about it in a personal way. It tore up out a piece of my heart. I felt as though part of my, my a part of me was lost, was deadened by this damage. I can't bear to look at it. And you've got to take that seriously. People really felt that deeply about it. But then they said something that really struck me as odd. They said, it must be returned to its natural state as quickly as possible. A windstorm is a natural state. That is a natural state. Trees that are blown down or in a forest fire or in a flood, those are natural states. And what people were complaining about then was change. They didn't like things to change. They had their own baseline. That was normalcy, that was nature. They didn't want anything other than that. And a second story. Early 19th century, steam engine technology is just being developed. The first steam engine drivers these are real novices. They're on standing on top of this huge boiler with steel wheels or wooden wheels perhaps underneath running on a rail. Nobody's ever done this before. The drivers wear top hats and carry a buggy whip because that's what a driver did. They drove a buggy, they carried a whip. You put them on top of a steel engine, a steel horsepower machine, and they still carry a buggy whip. That's a different kind of reaction to change. It's an attempt to take something forward that's familiar, but no longer relevant. Some kinds of change people resist in an interesting kind of way. Every now and then, I'll see something in, in the post-secondary education system, or in politics, or in culture, and I'll think to myself, wow, that's got a top hat and a buggy whip. It's just something that sort of tags along from the past and doesn't change. Uh, and it's, it's an answer to a question that's no longer even worth asking, perhaps. So I was asked to, to say something about openness and, and Canada 150 plus. I was thinking about these two stories and what they represented to me, and I, I realized that what I, what I want in Canada, the kind of openness I want, is an openness to change. I think too often we resist change. We come up with all sorts of arguments for not changing. Inertia is probably the most powerful force in the universe, and I think that's an important part of this. We offer up kind of change, and people say, well, we've always done it this way. That's just about the most mind-deadening response to change you'll ever encounter. Now, the other one, which I really love, and I often get this, is John, it always sounds like that too, John, People just don't like change. And that's, that's when I usually ask to see the refereed journal in which the study appeared in which it was determined that people don't like change because I really think people actually do like change. They just might want to carry a buggy whip forward for a little while anyways to make them feel secure that there's some sense of continuity. Now, I want us to change and I want us to be open to change in a whole bunch of ways in terms of pedagogy, the way we teach, in terms of the way we treat one another, in terms of the way our electoral system works. Canada 150, we're celebrating 150 years of the British North America Act and its subsidiary, the Canada Act. It's 150 years of a constitution. And you think about it, in 1867, there were three colonies, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and the province of Canada, which was divided in two to make Ontario and Quebec, and then Ottawa is added on as the federal level. So what we're celebrating is the addition of two levels of government. That's kind of phenomenal in its own right when you stop and think about it. What I'm saying is we have to be open to thinking about things like that. Was Confederation the right answer to that question? 
Is it an answer that still has relevance today? What are the questions we should be asking now? I want to be open to those questions, and I want a society in which we're open to those questions, but I realize also I'm getting old. So I want a generation that's younger than me to be asking those questions, to be inquisitive and curious and, and willing to bring on change and to build a culture that's open to change. I think if we do nothing else, it's the point, at this point in our history, there are so many things that do need to change, so many questions that do need to be asked, so many buggy whips and top hats that we're still carrying around that we need to question and be open to discarding. Uh, I'm hoping that the coming generation will make my Canada a more open place. Thanks very much.